About a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to go check out an event for Microsoft showcasing some of their latest announcements that they made regarding Copilot, uh, Recall for Windows 11, um, also integration with third-party application, and then, of course, some of their integrations with Copilot Plus PCs, kind of like this guy. This is a Snapdragon X Elite Lenovo laptop that features, of course, uh, an NPU that enables us to actually do a lot of AI functionalities that Microsoft is trying to leverage with some of those third-party integrations. This is TK. Let's go ahead and talk about all of the new things. And hopefully I'll have all the answers for you specifically in regards to recall and how it's going to work on our Windows PC. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos for you on the channel. So the event was held a couple of days ago in LA, and it was pretty much a showcase of the features that were announced about a week or so ago. Uh, some of them are specific to Copilot, like Copilot Voice and Copilot Vision. Uh, we also had a lot of conversations, or at least I had a lot of conversations with the Recall team that was available for us to check out, and I got a chance to see some demos of how Recall is going to function on our PCs, on Windows 11 PCs, and when it actually does come out in preview mode, hopefully in the next month or so. They promised that it was going to be available in an early version um, sometime before the end of the year, and I think that's going to be exciting. So the rollout of Recall is still not that close, but at least trying it may not be that long from now. Uh, I got a chance to see also some benefits with where you see the Copilot Plus PCs that are powered by the Snapdragon ecosystem. So the Snapdragon S Elite X Plus. Um, I actually, of course, had an opportunity to check out. So this is basically one of them. Uh, this is an X Elite Yoga uh, Lenovo laptop. Uh, it was, of course, one of the things that they also talked about, their integration or their deep integration with them, as well as the ability of using the NPUs to provide AI functionalities within video editing, like within Vegas uh, Video Editor, as well as also a DJ applications that they demoed. The last thing they also showed me right there was uh, a couple of demos on gaming and some of the improvements that they have within the Xbox bar that we have within our gaming set setup on Windows 11. I'm going to start off by talking about uh, basically what Copilot Voice is supposed to be. Now, if you've ever used the Copilot application on your smartphone, be it Android or iOS, you probably have used it functionally. You basically do some queries very much the way we use it when we use it on the web over Edge as far as a web app. But the update that they just pushed enables us to actually have voice conversations, kind of what we had with ChatGPT, as well as what we had with obviously Gemini. And now it's available for us to just basically turn on once we get the app. Now, what I like about this from the demo that I'm showing you guys some of those things is that it has about four voices to choose from right now. It's still in its early stages. So I probably would say it's not gonna be as advanced in the options that we get within the actual conversation or the actual, um, I guess, UI elements of it, either be it voice or visuals. Uh, but it is actually very functional as what would Copilot be. Uh, very simple, very nice, very conversational. I had the opportunity to talk to it a little bit about Dragon Ball in one of their booth sessions over there. So I'm going to show you guys a quick clip right now with audio and video. Hopefully you can hear it very well. Uh, but we were talking about what what did it think actually, because uh, I told, the, told it that I like, you know, Goku as a main character from Dragon Ball, as you can imagine. Uh, it had a different answer for me. So let's see what they said. I'm drawn to Vegeta though. He's got that whole redemption arc and a chip on his shoulder makes him more complex, especially as he grapples with his pride and desire to surpass Goku. Rivalry to friendship and everything in between, they push each other to new heights and that blend of competition and camaraderie is such a driving force. Now, the clip that I shared with you guys was a live conversation with the Copilot voice uh, system. Now, they had it set up in a phone booth where I was able to use a handset, but I wanted to record the audio for you guys. So my hope is that you understood. Essentially, it, it was a natural conversation back and forth between two people that are fans of Dragon Ball and why it felt like Vegeta had also another important part of it and why it favored Vegeta over Goku based on his heritage the prince, the, the pride, and everything that he provides into the saga. Closing that conversation, that now functional is actually available directly on your smartphone. Just update to the latest version of the Copilot app on your phone, and you should be able to access voice and check it out and tell me what you think in the comments below, of course. The next one we're going to talk about is Copilot Vision. Now, Copilot Vision is still early. It's not available. It will be available, and it will be basically an edge uh, based in, in experience, meaning it's going to be running in a, an Edge browser. And what it does for the most part, it sees what you see on the browser. So let's say you're searching for some stuff. And the demo that the gentleman showed me, he was researching some jackets and he was going back and forth a conversation style, asking it, what you think of this jacket? What are the recommendations? And what I found about that that was very unique was the fact that 
He was also able to research some hotels as well. And one of the questions that the, the actual AI was able to respond with was sifting through the reviews and kind of summarizing the experience of what are some of the main takeaways from the reviews, meaning what are some of the highlights, what are some of the concerns, and does the AI recommend this uh, spot or not? And based on the reviews, it actually did recommend it. And I like the way they're doing it. It's still a little bit, I probably would say early stages. It had a little bit of hiccups, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a nice little ecosystem functional option that works within uh, basically Edge. And the way that it works essentially is whatever you're looking at, if it's a page or a site, it can see it as long as you're activating it. And you can interact with it via voice or you can type as well. And you can jump between one window to another, ask it about recommendations, and even ask it about its style or what it thinks of the actual product. So now we're going to go in into Recall. Now, we all remember what happened with Recall. Initially, it was supposed to roll out not that long ago, and there was some concern as to how was the data housed or how was the data stored on your device. So first and foremost, Recall is not going to be released fully till the end, probably early next year. It's going to be available in, a, in, in, I probably would say like an early release sometime in either November or early December, and it's going to be available for the Insider program. The biggest thing I'll probably say from what I've seen is they've addressed all of the security concerns. The data for recall is double protected on the device, not only by actually encrypting it on hard drive, but also having it authenticated every single time you want to use it and validated every 15 minutes to make sure that you are the person activating it. So for the most part, it's going to be an app very much similar to the way Copilot works, but it's a separate app essentially sitting there as you see with that little icon. The pre is obviously for pre-release. That's the demo we saw. And the way it works is you authenticate with Windows Hello, so if either fingerprint or visual, and you authenticate to the system and it activates the app. So if you click the app by yourself and you're sitting on somebody's computer, it doesn't automatically find it. It requires you to authenticate and you have to be the original owner. So you could do it that way, or you can also go back to PIN, I think they said. But the focus of it essentially is the security function. Recall is supposed to grab a, basically a snapshot of what you're doing every about 15 minutes and it stores it on your drive. You're able to customize how much space you're able to give it on your system. And it obviously is optimized and intended to work very well on Snapdragon based PCs. So Snapdragon X Plus, X Elite with 16 gigs of RAM is going to be more than enough. They demoed it on a much more powerful PC, but I'm just referencing the baseline experience. Um, and then from the experience in there is very straightforward. It basically keeps all of the data that you have. And if let's say you give it 100 gigs or 50 gigs, whenever it hits that limit, it starts deleting content. The other thing that I want to mention is that the recall data, although encrypted, is not transferable, meaning you cannot migrate it from one system to the other. If your system crashes for any reason and you have to go back into, let's say, a restore point, all the data from recall gets wiped. There is no way of basically taking it out. And if for any reason your system has to be reset, of course, all of that data gets taken out as well. So there's a lot of functional option designed to keep the data for recall on device, encrypted on device, and non-movable. Will that change in the future? Will they allow us to migrate? I'm not sure, but the way it stands right now, that's how it's intended. The other question I had for them was essentially about sensitive data. And what I mean by that essentially is I personally work with a lot of companies and I work with a lot of NDAs. So non-disclosure agreements typically require me not to share anything and not to have something else shared with it. Or let's say, for example, let's say you're logging into your web uh, application of a bank or anything that requires like, account numbers, passwords, or so on. You don't want recall to keep snapping pictures of those. The system actually has a nice functional options of actually filtering out not only sites, but also if let's say you forgot and you never set that filter up and you go into the recall and let's say you want to say, and by the way, recall has a couple of really cool things. You can not only ask it about things like um, show me pictures of, yeah, sorry, uh, pictures of dogs and it'll find everything that it has within its small database with anything that looks like a dog or the word dog in it. You can also ask, it's like, hey, um, something with purple writing, which is the one she showed me. And it was a PowerPoint with actually a word written in purple. And what I liked about it is um, when you find it and select it and open it up, it'll take you not only back to the file, it'll open up the PowerPoint presentation in PowerPoint, of course, and jump back to that specific slide, which I really like the functional options there. So it's very specific. And that was the, essentially the point of recall, right? It's, it's supposed to recall something that you did not that long ago, but you just don't remember exactly how it was. So let's say you were browsing online and you found this really cool band, or in, in my case, a good Dragon Ball uh, you know, collectible, but I just don't remember what site it was. I can ask it to try to do that for me, and it basically goes through and does that. And let's say I, I forgot, and as I mentioned, I logged into my banking account, and I just don't want that information in there. When you go into the system, you can just obviously search for that site and then delete the actual instances or the actual screenshots that are available there. Once you do that, the system is recognizing saying, hey, you've deleted all of the instances from this specific site. 
do you want to exclude it? Do you want to create a filter for it? Or do you want to just block all banking sites? So it has some nice customizations as well to give uh, control for the user to be able to use it. And uh, I, before I forget, it is absolutely opt in, not opt out, meaning by default, it is off once the update comes in. If you choose to go in, you can opt into it, but by default, you are not signed up for it. The last thing I do want to also mention, there's an option on the bottom right side of the screen because it's a kind of a running widget. You'll always see when it's available and when it's grabbing screenshots, it'll give you a nice little notification. Once you see that, you're either able to basically activate it or pause it and, of course, have control over how it works. Um, the other thing that I saw in there as well, they were leveraging some of the power, of course, the MPU that we have with the Snapdragon X Elite. One of the functional options that we have in there as far as the, uh, the editing tool was the ability of actually masking or essentially removing a subject from one video and putting it into a separate video. And the demo was pretty straightforward. It's two short clips with, uh, I guess, a, a female standing and gazing at, at a distance. And she was able to use the traceback option to be able to isolate and find the actual subject, edit it out, put it in there as far as basically removing the background and then allowing it to be a mask over or basically an overlay on the second video. And it actually did it pretty reasonably. It wasn't the fastest edit, but from a tra tracing composition and be able to remove background and identifying the actual subject, the background, the foreground, a lot of that stuff was done very nicely. And again, it's leveraging some of the power of the NPUs. Uh, the DJ application is currently available on the, on the uh, Microsoft Store. You're able to download that. And it utilizes the NPU to leverage uh, audio syncing, sampling, and then also removal of background information, meaning uh, you're listening to a track and you can remove the, the, the drums or the bass or the, you know, the vocals. You can actually isolate different elements, uh, almost creating stems to a certain aspect and mixing audio between two different tracks. It's a lot of fun, but uh, unfortunately it was too loud for me to listen to it. So from the demo, it looked pretty simple, but I'm hoping that it's something we'll be able to also test in the near future. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about obviously is the new update or the update that's coming into the Microsoft Gaming Bar. The big benefit about this is they went with a compact mode, which is very small, very minimalistic, especially also designed for laptops. So you're not taking too much space, but they also integrated that new functional option for the browser function, which essentially is an edge window that allows us to actually look up or research things in case we ever get stuck in a game without ever having to leave the game. So if you're working on a smaller laptop, smaller window, a lot of those functions I feel like are very nice and very important, but the ability of not having to leave the game by just running it as an overlay since the game bar is already over there. You just do window G for activation. Uh, this makes it very nice and very simple. You can customize it, turn it on, set it up, and it works really nice. And I like the functional options that they showed us in there because they were leveraging it on uh, basically a, a handheld gaming, kind of like the, the Legion Go uh, as far as a functional option. You connect it to a monitor and you're not limited by the space of the, uh, the device because it's much smaller. The compact edition works really nice and it doesn't cover anything in front of it. The browser, of course, the one they showed me was on a PC and that was very nice as well. So you get a chance to actually benefit from having an open window, find your guide, get the answers to the questions you have without ever having to close the game and then jump back into it or even make that window as sticky so that you can keep it in there while you're playing. And of course, that was pretty much most of the things that they showed me in there. At the end of the day, there was a lot of Copilot Plus PCs uh, from different manufacturers, Microsoft themselves, of course, as well as uh, maybe Asus, Lenovo, Samsung's in there as well. And it was a lot of nice things to share. And of course, I'm very excited to see what they're going to be doing. Now, oddly enough, if you're watching this part of the video, uh, I'm actually editing the entire video on a Copilot Plus PC powered by the Snapdragon X Elite, that yoga book that I shared with you guys in the beginning of the video. I'm actually editing this entire video on it, which makes this even more of a, a good concept going on with what Microsoft is doing and what, of course, Qualcomm is doing to bring in us uh, not only just mobile computing, but also mobile computing and editing productivity level uh, work with mobile hardware like this that have long battery life and, of course, uh, great experience and powerful processors. Hope you guys found this information helpful. I was very excited to check it out. I want to say thank you very much to Microsoft for inviting me to that special event. But at the end of the day, I feel like Recall for me was the star of the show. Copilot Plus, uh, right, Copilot Voice Voice and Copilot Vision are very nice and I like the way they're doing it. I feel like voice is definitely in its early stages and it's going to get better. The thing I would say is that recall was the biggest thing for me because I feel like that was the one that was there was a lot of questions around it when it was originally supposed to come out. And it looks like by the time it does come out, it's going to be addressed and of course, much more locked down for security for the for you as a user. And if you are not, by the way, if you're using uh, the recall and for some reason you stepped away every 15 minutes, it re-authenticates. And if you're not there, it locks out the recall. So even if you, let's say, land somebody your computer and you forgot to close it, they have a very limited amount of time before the actual system requires them. And of course, if you lock your computer when you walk away and you unlock it, by default, that locks recall as well. So there's, a, again, a lot of functional options. 
Um, but if there was one thing I probably will say that is still a little bit of a concern for me from what I've seen is Microsoft's implementations right now are still very much, I would say, siloed experiences. Copilot voice on the phone doesn't talk to Copilot uh, vision on the on, in Edge, and it doesn't talk to the Copilot on our PC, which is, for the most part, uh, like Copilot on uh, Microsoft Copilot in the 365 in there. So a lot of the things I wish at some point will start talking to each other, and they said that's in the works, uh, because I would love to be basically having a conversation with, let's say, Copilot voice, and it'll say, hey, I just got an email notification from, uh, let's say, your wife or your son's school. It's an important message, have it jump in there or having it open documents directly from there while I'm having a conversation with it. Or let's say I'm in a, a, pro, a, you know, a Copilot uh, vision experience on a, on a browser and I suddenly say, hey, why don't you just grab a few images from here and then put those for me in a PowerPoint presentation. So I'd love that carry over and I hope to see that in the near future. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Thank you very much for the support. I will see you in the next video.